This is static back abductor presses. So you've already done your static back abductor press hold where we were continually squeezing out against the strap. This time we're going to do the same movement but reps. So we're going to ask the muscles to switch on and then ask the muscles to switch off. You need your static back set up. I won't go into too much detail about that, but let's get ourselves into position and we'll pop our legs over our static back set up. We're putting our strap on over our legs like this. I'm going to do that little tuck of the strap into um, the loop just so that it ensures it doesn't come apart as I do my squeezing. And I'm looking for, as I squeeze out against my knees, are they staying in alignment with my hips? So more often than not, you want the strap to be a little bit narrower than you think, because the narrower the strap, the more resistance you're going to get. If the knees are spinning out externally, we're externally rotating the hip, which, yes, it wakes up your glutes, but it's not asking them to abduct. As much. We are really trying to go specifically after these guys and the outer edges of your legs here rather than the external rotators which are a little bit more around the back, okay? So we're going to do exactly the same kind of setup that we had before, hands facing up. We're trying to keep our pelvis still and neutral, belly relaxed. As we do what we're about to do, so I'm going to ask you to squeeze out against the strap, hold, release squeeze out against the strap, hold, release, etc., etc. you might notice that you are trying to pull your abdominals, lower back and pelvis down to the floor. So you're almost trying to create like a pelvic tilt movement. There is no movement through the pelvis here. There's no gripping of the belly. There's no movement of the rib cage or the lower back. We are merely squeezing out against the strap. You might find that hard, so if these muscles are dysfunctional, you might find that lots of stuff is trying to happen around here. That's okay, but notice it, be cognizant of it because that's your body compensating. We need to get these guys switching on and that's gonna happen by trying to keep that upper body still and focusing on the burn happening here. Again, this is not about how hard you squeeze the strap, it's about how you squeeze the strap. With what muscles do you move and squeeze that strap, okay? Keep a nice steady tempo, keep a nice low rate of effort. Once you're sure that it is these muscles that are creating that movement, then you can start going a little bit harder, but I want you to really tune in and focus. We're gonna do three minutes here, off we go. Keep breathing. In and out of the nose, we squeeze out against the strap using our outer upper thighs, we hold and we release, fully release. We squeeze out, we hold, we release. We squeeze out, we hold, we release. We're going at that type of tempo. Squeeze out, hold, release. Squeeze out, hold and release. Okay, so you're getting a tempo. Watch your breath. So are you holding your breath in an effort to wake up these abductors? Hopefully not, but keep that steady, calm, nasal, diaphragmatic breathing going. So we're moving our belly up and down, it stays relaxed. The jaw stays relaxed. Hands stay relaxed. Shoulders stay relaxed. I am not moving my pelvis backwards. So as I squeeze out against the strap, my pelvis isn't moving. I'm not using my abdominals to pull my lower back down to the floor because that's me trying to recruit my abdominals to create pelvic movement to switch on the glutes. I want my knees and my hips effectively. It's not really your knees, it's the femurs. So I want the movement of my femurs to stimulate this hip response. I don't want the hip response coming because I'm using my rib cage movement effectively to create a downward spiral of movement. So one of the kind of biggest problems that we have with our glutes is that lots and lots of people have taught their abdominals to switch on far too much. So the abdominals have become very dominant and the glutes are not dominant 
And the other problem that we have is lots of people are very hypertonic in their pelvic floor. So the kind of inside of you muscle, shall we say. So lots of people get told to do pelvic floor exercises, which I don't think are very helpful for many people um, because the pelvic floor becomes dominant, more and more dominant, and we lose control of the glutes. And likewise for the abdominals, lots of people get fed this kind of myth that we need to have this very strong belly bracing to protect our lower back. And what that does is actually make us stiffer and more dysfunctional. So we need to learn to relax our belly and breathe through it. We need to be relaxing our pelvic floor here. It's actually the legs moving out to the side that is stimulating these lateral hip muscles into abduction. So that the movement of abduction is the knees moving away from the midline of the body. So keep on breathing. We're at three minutes now. Hopefully feeling a little bit of work here, maybe a little bit of shakiness through your legs and possibly even a little bit of relaxation and change going on in the upper body. So that was static back abductor presses.